Hey what's up guys, I am Sam, today we will be creating this effect. Alright so I don't even know what to call this effect because people are calling this effect with different names online. So I just went to google and searched for, no not, not Rolar Mongolus, I searched for vibe powers and then I went to wikipedia from there and I looked for his powers so powers and abilities and then there I read this wipes powers enabled him to create shock waves of considerable length so I am calling this effect shock wave force field effect and that's where the name came from so let's just get started so I'm just gonna import my footage and by the way if you guys have seen my breach effect tutorial it's the same footage you know I was too lazy to reshoot Never mind. So what we're gonna do is create the force field or the shock wave first. So this is what it looks like by itself. So we'll just create a new composition and make it 1920 by 1080 and 5 seconds will be okay. So we'll just create a new solid and uh, rename it as shock wave and uh, just make sure it's comp size so we'll just hit make comp size and hit ok so first of all we'll just go to effect and uh, noise and grain fractal noise and then we'll just play with the settings over here so we'll just set it to dynamic twist so we get some twisty pattern and then we're gonna play with the brightness and contrast so we'll just decrease the brightness and increase the contrast like that And maybe also just go to transform and increase the scale a bit. And then we're gonna animate the evolution. So we'll just alt click on the evolution and set time asterisk 500. So we'll have something like this. And then what we're gonna do is um, take the offset turbulence and uh, set a keyframe and then move ahead in time and come to the end and we'll just set a negative value a higher negative value so we'll just maybe minus 10,000 so this is what we'll get all right so now what we can do is uh, maybe just take the pen tool and create a mask like a shock wave so something like that and then we're gonna hit F and feather it like that so we don't have any sharp edges alright so we have this noise now now we need to create these highlights so I'm just gonna create a new solid and we can name it as highlights hit enter and then we'll go to effect generate radio waves so we'll just solo this for a moment and we can see we have these radio waves and then again all we need to do is play with these values so what I'm gonna do is first make a mask because we don't need the wave type to be a polygon we need to follow it a mask path so we'll just create a mask and we'll create uh, something like a diamond so it will be like that and just refine it a bit and that looks good and then we'll set the wave type to mask and we'll select the mask so now we can see that we have these waves in this shape you can also just adjust the mask a bit all right and then we're gonna do is increase the velocity so we'll get something like this and we need it to be facing the left side so we'll set the direction to negative 90 and uh, then we'll increase the frequency so it fills in like that maybe just a bit more and then we can just shift the producer point to the right side like that Alright, I'll just reduce the expansion just a bit so that the waves are not 
too big and maybe just increase the velocity more something like 500 or 600 or something like that and then increase the frequency just a touch and then we can come down and set the color to light blue so what else we can do is decrease the lifespan so that the waves don't leave this area and they stay in the composition and you know this is fading out so we don't need that so we'll just set the fade out time to zero so we'll have something like this maybe just decrease it a bit and then set the start width to 1 and the end width to 10 so we have something like this and then what I'm gonna do is duplicate the shock wave and bring it above the highlights and then just unsolo it and then we'll just make sure that it's center aligned so we'll just hit this button of vertical alignment and then what we'll do is set this highlights layer to alpha matte so we get something like this and what we also need to do is make these radio waves travel faster so we'll just take this layer right click time time stretch and we'll just set the stretch factor to maybe 40 and hit ok and then extend the layer like that now what we'll do is duplicate the highlights and just solo the layer for a moment and we need to change this pattern so what we'll do is just bring it like that and kind of make it an inverted C like that so what we'll have is this and we also need some randomization so we'll just maybe increase the expansion and decrease the frequency and uh, maybe decrease the expansion and make it kind of light colored also set it to screen so we'll have something like this alright so for now we'll just remove all the color from the effect and uh, we'll just focus on these things right now and we can just rename this to sharp highlights and we can also add some glow to it so we'll just go to effect stylize glow and we just increase the glow radius and we have this so as you can see the effect starts from here so we'll just animate the mask to go down with the waves so so we'll just select the shockwave layer hit M and set a mask path and then move back in time I mean not actually you can time travel but yeah so we'll just go back in time just scale down the mask and hit control to just have it scaled uniformly and that's what we'll have and we also do the same for this shockwave so we'll just hit M and uh, make a mask and set a keyframe back in time and just scale it down just like that now for now this doesn't look what we want so we'll just create a new adjustment layer and we'll go to effect distort and ripple so we'll just add some distortion to this effect and we'll just increase the radius like that and then we'll just increase the wave width maybe just set it to 100 and set the height to 100 as well and increase the wave speed like that and make sure to set the center of the ripple to the start of the shock wave like that so this looks good but it looks perfect so we're gonna add another distortion on top of ripple so we'll just go to effect distort and turbulent displace and then we'll just play with the values again so we'll just set the displacement to turbulent smoother so it's kind of smooth so we're just gonna increase the amount like that and decrease the size like that and then what we're gonna do is animate the evolution so we'll just alt click times 500 you know the same thing we did before 
All right, so what we're gonna do next is make another adjustment layer and we'll go to effect, blur and sharpen, CC vector blur and then we'll increase the amount like that and then decrease the ridge smoothness just a bit, maybe 0.9 and decrease the map softness, maybe 10. So it gives it a spooky look, but don't worry. The next effect will make it look better. So we'll just go to effect, blur and sharpen, and directional blur. So we'll increase the blur length like that and set the direction to 90 degrees. All right, so let's just see what we have here. Alright, so what I feel is the highlights should be less bright than the sharp highlights. So we'll just make it a bit gray and hit OK. And also, I'll just increase the velocity a bit more. Alright, so this looks pretty good and we'll just go to our main composition and import the effect in here. And we get something like this. So for this, I'm going to use a third party plugin, which is absolutely free from videocopilot.net and that is color vibrance. So I'll just choose color vibrance and we'll just decrease the vibrance to 0.5 and change the color to bluish kind of color and hit OK and increase the brightness to 2. And also increase the gamma like that and then we'll just set the matte alpha to on so we'll have something like this and then we can start positioning the shock wave to our hand so we'll just position it like that and we'll just shrink the width like that and just try to position it and next what we'll do is duplicate this layer Maybe just rename it to shock wave. All right, so what we'll do is duplicate this shock wave layer and the layer that's below, we'll just rename it to shadow. So we're gonna just take the color and maybe just set it to white, increase the vibrance maybe, and uh, increase the brightness, and increase the gamma. And maybe just increase the alpha boost a bit. Then go to effect, color correction, tint, and set it to black. And let's solo this for a moment and let's just see what we have here. And uh, maybe decrease the preserve luminance. Go to effect, blur and sharpen, fast blur, and increase the blurriness like that. Maybe just decrease the tint amount. Let's play with these values. Alright, so what I feel is that the impact of this effect is too weak. So we'll just go to the shockwave layer to just tweak it a bit. And what I'll do is duplicate the shockwave layer and bring it above the sharp highlights. And set the transfer mode to screen. And then also just offset the time a bit and then just increase the layer. So we're just trying to fill in the empty spaces. All right, so now what we're gonna do is make a new adjustment layer and go to effect, stylize, glow, and we'll just create a mask around this part so we just see the glow in here. And hit F and increase the feathering to maybe 200. So we'll just increase the threshold and then decrease the intensity and then increase the radius a lot. And then we'll duplicate the glow and decrease the intensity just a bit and then increase the radius like that. All right, so now we also need to align the shock wave with our hand, so we'll just shift these layers ahead like that and it should look like this, okay. And then we'll also animate the opacity of the glow layer. So we'll just hit T, set a keyframe, move back and set it to zero. So it'll look something like that. 
and what we'll do is just take the shock wave and go to effect color correction and tint and just decrease the tint amount all right what i feel is that the highlights are getting submerged with the sharp highlights so we'll just maybe shift it a bit and uh, that should look okay and maybe just decrease the opacity of the shock waves a touch just a bit all right, so we can just parent the shadow layer to the shock wave layer and scale it up just a bit and then reposition it and that should look okay all right so now we can do some color correction to make it look better so we'll just create a new adjustment layer go to effect color correction hue and saturation and just decrease the saturation and increase the lightness just a bit and then we'll go to effect color correction brightness and contrast increase the contrast maybe 50 and then go to effect blur and sharpen and just increase the sharpness a bit maybe 15 and then we'll create another adjustment layer go to effect color correction curves and then we'll try to make it look better so Just give it some contrast like that. Let me go to red. And that looks good. Maybe we can just decrease the brightness in the shock wave there. And uh, maybe decrease the gamma just a bit. By the way, you can also use the same techniques to make the canary cry effect. So you can just go to the shock wave and disable the adjustment layers. And then set the wave type to polygon and just make a new adjustment layer go to effect blur and sharpen and fast blur and just keep the fast blur so that you can just get the canary cry effect but that's not what we want so we'll just have these back and let's just see what we finally have here all right that's it i hope you all enjoyed this tutorial if you like this video give it a thumbs up and do subscribe to my channel it motivates me to create more videos so just hit that subscribe button and i will see you next time thanks for watching and goodbye bam